So we created our first model in Django. Um, might have been a little overwhelming, but you'll get a hang of it after we create a couple of them. Uh, they're pretty straightforward, and once we start messing around with them in the, in um, the administrative site and um, on our front end, you'll you'll get a better understanding of them. But before we can move on to actually working in the administrative site and seeing what we did with our models, uh, we need to do a little bit of house cleaning. Um, we got to set a couple of things up. We got to migrate our database and uh, so on. So we're going to go ahead and do this stuff here. And then the next tutorial, we'll jump into the administrative site. So go ahead and open your terminal. Uh, we got to do a couple things. First off, if you remember back in our blog, we installed time zone and we're using date time field down here. Um, we need to install a module. Now the module might be already installed on your system. If not, we're just going to install it or check to make sure it's installed anyway. So what we're going to do is um, install a module called uh, PYTZ, Pi Time Zoom. So let's go ahead and do pip3 install PYTZ. And this is going to just run and install real quickly. Um, I don't know if I have mine installed yet. We'll find out. Nope. So it's going to go ahead and install it. Awesome. So we now satisfied our date and time that is required by our Django models and also our SQLite 3 database. So now the time zone will work. All right. So next thing we want to do is go into our settings because in our CMS here and we got to go into our settings and we got to add our app. Remember we looked at this a couple tutorials ago we looked at apps. We saw there's admin, there's authenticate, content type, sessions, messages, static files. Well now we just add an app called blog and for us to be able to work with the database we need to be able to find what apps are connected. And this is how we tell Django, hey, this app should be included in the database and this app is connected to this project. So we'll just do blog like that and put a comma and there you go. You have now included your app into the Django project. So that was pretty simple, right? <clears throat> and these are just steps you should follow like uh, all right, so you create your models and you include what or install any packages that might need. And then you come into uh, your settings and you include your apps. All right, so I'm kind of working a progress here. Um, and then next thing you want to do is go ahead and we're going to, oops, that's not, quote shouldn't be there. Um, we're going to go ahead and migrate our database, which basically what we're going to do is gather all the information in the database we just created in the models and we're going to put it into a folder and we're going to say, hey, this is what we're going to load into our database, but right now we're just grabbing all the information. So how do we do that? Well, we use something called make migration. So Python 3 manage.py make migrations blog. <coughs> Hit return. And what it's going to do, like I said, it's going to read our models. It's going to set up uh, a file up in migrations as you can see initial 01 or 001 initial.py if you open this up you see it kind of just set it up the way the database wants to read or however python migrates it to the database all right so it actually just took our information that we made and sets it up for itself to migrate to a database all right so if you're coming from SQL, if you understand SQL, we can actually look at what it's going to look like or what the SQL looks like itself. And when, this is pretty simple. All we have to do is go into our terminal, do Python 3, manage, manage.py, SQ, oops, SQ, migrate, log, and I think it was 001, it should be 001, yeah, 001. Uh, 0001. And this is going to kick back the SQL um, format for the database that we're creating, the table that we're creating. So it's blog post and it's ID, which ID is automatically created for us. You know, we didn't 
put an ID field in there, but it's automatically created for us. Then you look, see title when I says VAR car, where in ours is uh, char field, but in real life when it goes into SQL database, it's VAR car. So this is what that looks like. Uh, there's no need for you to go look at this unless you really want to see what's going on. This also helps if you're having problems with your database and you understand SQL. Maybe you can go in and look at this and say, oh, maybe I'm missing something there or something like that. All right. Um, anyhow, that's how you do that. Um, now we want to go ahead and sync our database. Basically, we want to put this information into our database. So how do we do that? Well, let me clear my screen here and we'll do... Python 3 manage.py migrate. Boom. And this is going to go ahead and migrate our make migrations into our database. So you see it says applying blog 01 initial. Okay. So create it blog. And it tells you up here operations to perform, apply all migrations, admin, authenticate blog, content type sessions. So all these up here is what we saw in settings up here all right and all them that all these ones that it spit out what I'm trying to get to is these all have some kind of um, database with them so it, it says apply all migrations and it does admin and all them uh, so which one are we missing messages are probably not stored in the database so all right so that's what's going on there and one last thing I want to do before we jump into our uh, make our administrative, administrative site, we got to create a super user. And what is a super user? A super user is the person who has control over the whole site. All right. So we're going to create a super user and that person will have access to everything. And normally that's going to be the developer or whoever's managing the site. Uh, you don't want to create a super user for every Joe Schmo is going to be going on your site because they'll have access to a lot of things. So let's go ahead and create a super user. We'll do Python 3 manage.py create super user. Alright. So it's going to go through and it's going to ask you for a username. Uh, if I left it blank, it'd be Tom, but I'm going to make mine admin. Alright. Then my address, email address, Tom Myers. 81 at yahoo.com. All right. Um, and then we're going to do your password. So put in whatever password you like. Mine might not match because my fat fingers. No, that. All right. And then super users create it. So we need to create a super user to be able to log into the back end of the administrative site because the super user is now saved in the auth um, app here. All right. So that is just to clean up after you create your database. It's probably the steps you need to follow each time you create a model. And then you follow those steps. And then you can move into the admin section or views. We're going to the admin. Then we'll go to views. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.